Hi friends, Benita with Knitting in the Mitten. And um, it's snowing. Um, just a light snow. Um, you can see we have a little dusting after most of it had melted. Um, and I was gonna use it as an excuse to stay inside where it's warm and toasty and where I can do my knitting. And then my neighbor sent me a text and said he'd been out to walk the dog and that it's a beautiful day for a walk in the woods. And I knew I could probably convince at least one person to join me. So um, she's on her way over and we're gonna take a little snowy walk in the woods on a beautiful winter's day. So uh, the fresh air does me a lot of good and although I don't always want to get out in it, um, once I'm out, I really enjoy it. So find a way to get some fresh air. So I think that little video I showed you um, of the walk outside was from Sunday. And now it's Thursday. And I have finally finished the body of my cardigan. Um, and I am needing to bind off the bottom cuff and it called for a tubular bind off which I looked up the link that they gave me and it made zero sense. <laughs> it looked really complicated and hard um, and they kind of indicated it's like the Kitchener stitch but all the stitches are on one needle and so for you knitters out there anytime I've ever done the Kitchener stitch there have been two needles a front and back needle and I know how to do that. But I did not know how to do this. And so I Googled some more and um, found another version. And I'll show you. So the other version involves putting all the knit stitches on one needle and all the purl stitches on a different needle. And so I did that. And now I can just do the Kitchener stitch like I know how to do the Kitchener stitch. And um, it can be really daunting if you don't do it much, but I know how to do it. Um, but there's a lot of stitches. I've never done this many before. Usually you've got just like the toe of a sock to do or something. So this is gonna take me a while and I'm gonna try not to make it too tight. Um, but at least I feel like I have a plan. So that's a good thing. What's not a good thing is that there's a critter in my wall and um, I heard him maybe a week ago and um, I've heard him a few days, quite a few days. <laughs> um, there were maybe two days I didn't hear him. One day he ran across the length of, or the width, the length, I don't know, across one end of the house. Um another uh, most of the time like today it sounds like he's in the wall and he's trying to chew his way out <laughs> he, it's not all the time so I feel like he comes and goes um I have been feeding the squirrels I fed them last winter and I started feeding them again I leave a pan of peanuts out there for him so my theory is he thinks I like him and he's putting the peanuts in my wall <laughs> but I really have no idea and I don't want him in there. And um, someone that lives near me said that they heard sounds in their wall too. And it seems to be when I don't hear sounds in my wall. So I feel like it's the same squirrel going back and forth. But um, probably not. So I called Vamoose Varmint and they're coming tomorrow to investigate. But... Um, I can't have a critter living in my wall. So um, let's hope that we can figure out how he's getting in and stop him. I can't really get a good video of the sounds I hear normally. Um, so I will show you a video of the sounds I heard one day in a little different part of the house by the basement steps. Um, usually he's um, on the fireplace wall side of my house. So, um, but he's not in the fireplace. He's definitely in the wall or the ceiling. I don't know, but um, I hope they can get him.